Hey guys, and welcome to Satisfactory. Today, I want to show you my steel production. This here is producing my steel ingots. It's made of 60 foundries. And here we have the constructors. That would be 180 constructor producing steel pipes. So overall, we'll have six full Mark IV belts of steel pipe. And just for the fun of it, I put my space elevator just right here so you can see the size of the thing. So this building, the steel pipe building, is 18 floor high. And each floor has three walls. So that's more than 50 walls up. That's massive. So for this video, we're going to split it in three parts. First, we're going to look at the iron, uh, the steel foundries. Second, we're going to look at the steel pipes. And last, I'm going to show you uh, me recording myself building the last three floors of the steel pipes. Um, I put timestamps in the description, so feel free to jump from one section to the other. So let's get started. So while we get there, uh, my design, it's fully upgradable to uh, accommodate 10 Mark IV belts of steel pipes. So everything there is uh, fully uh, upgradable. You just need to put more floors on top of it. And here you have it. So those are the foundries. I did five per floor. And let me show you the recipe I use for that. So I use the alternate recipe that consumes 20.5 iron ingot, six coal, uh, 45 coal, sorry, and that produce 45 steel ingot per minute. So that means that we're gonna need 10 foundries to fill up an MK4 belt. Uh, 10 foundries will require to have one full belt of coal and half a belt of ingot to uh, produce that. So 10 foundries, that's going to be put on two floors. So every two floors, we're going to produce one Mark IV belt of steel ingot. And we, since we have 12 floors, we're going to have six belt of steel ingot. If we want to put more, just add some floors on top and you can reach uh, 10 Mark IV belts. So let's see where the input is coming from. I did a small bus here. See, uh, I have, uh, so far I have five coal line. I have one ingot line here. They go in different places. The first three lines, like the, the first steel ingot and the first two coal lines, they go into my internal conveyor elevator. Uh, what I call internal conveyor elevator is the one with my splitters on the line directly. So here, let me go uh, show you. All the splitters are put directly onto the line and they feed the foundries like so. And uh, those three lines, they're going to be able to feed four floors. So one coal line we, is going to feed two, two floors. The second is going to feed the two other floors. And the one iron ingot line is good for four floors. So uh, that's all good there. Uh, since I needed a total of six coal lines and three iron ingot lines, I needed to add to this setup an external elevator. So those external elevators don't have any splitter on them. I just input belts into the system whenever I need them. So let's see here. See those three belts going in right there? That's where the system begins a new cycle. So we see those three lanes are going to get into my internal elevator. Going to feed four floors. And after that, three new belts are going to go in and feed the last four floors. So that external elevator, it doesn't show properly right now because uh, my belts, um, I, I was quite lazy and I just put them like uh, for it to be easy to bring the product in. But really, if I imagine, manage this thing well, uh, we could do like 10 belts here. 
and my internal elevator is actually capable of holding six belts instead of just three so really six plus the ten we can go up to 16 belts and if we think about it if we want 10 mark 4 belts of steel ingots we need 15 belts of input products so that would be 10 for coal and five for iron ingots uh, i have one line here of coal that is missing and that's because i'm currently using it for power but when i'm done with my oil power production uh, this whole line is going to get in there and i'm going to produce my whole thing for the output now uh, i'm also using an internal elevator uh, that means that my mergers are directly onto the line but really uh, this elevator is capable of holding six lines as well but we don't need them because as soon as one is ready it's gonna go over to the other building so that it gets uh, transformed into steel pipes so this whole foundry setup is exactly the same as my iron uh, foundry setup except for this elevator here this was not there because it wasn't needed but for the setup for the steel it is needed so let's move over to the uh, steel pipe production so all my steel ingots are going over here so let's see what happens there so we have first the line gets in here and it gets splitted and now i want to address uh, some question i had in the common comments um, on how the splitter work so here you see half of it is going up and half of it is going there so we have 225 ingots going up and 225 going into the smelt uh, the constructor here as you can see i did a 10 constructor per floor uh, why i did that well let's see the recipe it takes 15 ingots per minute and it output 15 pipe per minute so with 10, uh, I input 150 ingots and output 150 pipes. Uh, and for the 18 floor, the whole thing is going to produce uh, six Mark IV belt. So basically, you need 30 constructor to fill one belt. So we mentioned that 225 ingots are coming in this way, but the whole system is only consuming 150 so slowly but surely those machines are going to get filled up and one, once they get filled up uh, this is going to back up and the overflow instead of jamming here it's going to go to the um, to the up the up the well, <laughs> sorry about that it's going to go up the line so when the system is stable uh, meaning after a few minutes of running uh, those constructor are going to be filled and this whole thing is going to only going to consume 150 per minute and the remaining 300 is going to go up the line so we see here it's going to go up once and it's getting split here again so that would mean 150 there 150 up the line and here it's going to stop i put a, a splitter but i could just uh, put the uh, the line right in there and uh, see the new line is coming from the other building and it's gonna get split like uh, the same the first three floors so we have my ingots coming in it's gonna get split for the um, 10 machines and the splitter here is the same see you say you see 150 coming in it's going 50 50 50 but those machines are going to get filled up and the overflow is just going to go down the line. And eventually when the system is stable, uh, all the machines are going to be fed properly. You just need to leave the machines running for a few minutes and everything's going to be good. For the output now, I decided to do an external, uh, sorry, an internal conveyor elevator. So the mergers are directly onto the line. 
but here you see only half the floor is outputting on this system so that means that I need uh, 30 constructor to fill a line five per floor so really six floors will fill one line and since, since I have 18 floors three lines are going to be produced on each side so it's exactly the same on the other side so what you see here those two lines those are produced up top and the actual line here that's the one that's getting filled on the first six floors and as we go up we're going to see there's less and less uh, belts see it's going to go and less and less the last six floors we see only one belt so there you have it that's my steel production and this whole thing as well is upgradable meaning that by putting more floors up top up top there we're going to have uh, the possibility to go up to 10 mark IV steel pipes belt and that's quite a lot just want to show you the top of the factory but before that let's have a look at power like my usual setup power is getting up with my walkways uh, the same walkway system allows me to go up and down the floors and it goes to the top there and for power things were really tight I was lucky that it fits so well, but I had to use a Mark II pole, power pole here. Uh, the reason is that is that the whole setup is really, really, really tight. So let's see here. We have um, two space available here. And on the other side, we have none because I uh, pushed the constructor right up to the wall. See here, I cannot put a power pole. Well, I was lucky. There's only two spots here. You see, I succeeded in putting one there and one over there, but there's none other spot left. So I use a Mark II here. That's a Mark II, but it could have been a Mark IV. So this one is connecting to three machines. Uh, it connects to uh, the other Mark II here. That connects to three machines as well for a total of six. And this Mark II is connected to the main one at the entrance. And this one is lastly connected to the remaining four machines. And it goes to the uh, main power line that goes up and down the stairs. So uh, the power works great, but I was a bit lucky there. Uh, one of the solution I could have done uh, if I didn't find those uh, two sweet spots here is to push all the constructor one space uh, away from the wall since I have two spaces left on the other side, pushing it one space away would have uh, did the whole thing evenly. So uh, that worked all good, but uh, <laughs> I was glad I found those two spots by the constructor there. So let's go up top. So we are at the top now. See how tall that is? You can see a big chunk of the map from up top here. It's quite nice. It's beautiful already and see the factory is going along quite well we have a bunch of production set up and with this uh, steel pipe set up uh, uh, that's a big landmark for the factory uh, after that it's gonna be a much smaller design uh, beside the, the rubber factory is gonna come here that's gonna be my masterpiece it's gonna go to the up to the sky it's gonna be really great so um, I'm going to show you now how to design the thing. Uh, I'm just going to show you the output before we do that. So here you see my, um, my steel pipes are getting onto the bus. So I have uh, four lanes, four belts going onto the bus and two belts, those that come out of the back here. See, there's two belts coming out of the back here, one there and one on the other side. They're going to go to my, when I remove that, they're going to go to my um, encased uh, industrial beam production that's going to be set up right here. So this is going to be my main bus. Currently, it's quite empty, but uh, it's going to fill fast. Uh, I have five belts of uh, iron ingots. 
uh, some are consumed by my other factories. My uh, my rods are there. My um, plates, and uh, at the back there, here we have the cables and the wires on the side. And those are also smelters are producing ingots. So this is gonna be awesome. I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. And uh, if you liked it, please leave a like. I'm going to leave you with uh, the construction of the last three floors of this thing. And we see this as the night is settling. That's quite nice. Well, thank you for watching and have a good day. So let's build this thing. We are currently on the 14th floor and we need uh, three more floors to uh, build up. See here, I have, uh, I have prepared everything. That's the roof over there. Uh, this thing I usually build first. I build my uh, power supply and all the walkways needed to uh, go up and down the structure. When I get here, I just I start with the floors. Once the floor are done, I usually try to bring the the belts up. So uh, why did I choose the 14th floor is because this whole building has um, a three floor cycle for the input belt. So the uh, steel ingots that come in, I need to replace the belt every three floors because uh, basically it's feeding 30, uh, 30 uh, constructors and those 30 constructor will empty a belt uh, and then a mark for belt totally. So here I have a one belt ready. This one is not filled because uh, I'm missing one belt of, um, of coal. It's gonna come quite fast after that once I'm done with my power with oil. So I'm gonna connect this. one more floor so let's stack the poles on the best way to stack the pole is just to align my cursor with uh, the side of the pole if you do like this in the middle it's much harder to stack when you do uh, put the cursor with fitting with the side of the pole it's much easier it goes up like uh, quite fast Okay, so let's bring the belt up. Need it here, like that. And it's gonna keep on going up. I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna put my walls also. So each floor has a, a height of three walls. So that would be one floor, two floors, and three floors. Let's bring that up as well. What I don't like about the conveyor poles is that you can build two on the same spot. So if you go uh, too fast with your clicks, uh, you just build two at the same space. So uh, it's not, ide not ideal. Just wasting resources, but it doesn't show. So you you don't know uh, where to deconstruct to uh, get your material back. So just take a bit of your time. Uh, my output now has a cycle of six floors. So uh, it's already been going on for three floors right now. Just need to bring it back up for the last three. That's gonna be, fill a whole belt.
and it's uh, important to do the the looping here before you put the splitter and merger because uh, you're gonna run into some problems if you don't you're gonna do get some uh, encrouching and stuff like that it's always better to put up the belts before you put the splitter and merger gonna save you some hassle I do get some lag sometimes. I think my factory is getting too big. And do the looping. Once that's done, we're gonna put the constructor. And same thing as with the belt, it's it's nice to put a, uh, actually it's not nice, it's needed to put a constructor before you put um, the merger and splitter. The reason is that um, constructor do a check for collision but the splitters don't. So um, here I'm gonna put it like so. But let's say I put the splitter here. The merge, uh, that would be a splitter, yeah. I put a splitter here. That's gonna be aligned like so. I wanna put the other constructor here. See, there's no room for it because of the splitter. But if, if I remove it and I put the constructor that I'm gonna be able to put a splitter on like so so always put your uh, machines first and then put your splitters and your mergers you're gonna save up some space you also notice that I uh, I didn't leave any space here uh, in retrospect I should have uh, because if I put a wall here well I won't be able to because my belt is is looping here uh, and it's touching my wall uh, ideally, I would have uh, moved this whole stack like one space to the side, but <laughs> I didn't want to rebuild the whole thing, so I just left it like that. Uh, and this is not the outside wall, it's just the wall separating m the uh, inside uh, conveyor elevator with the outside one, so it's not critical. Uh, I could have just moved this whole thing one space uh, toward me, and there's, there's some room left over there. So I could have done that, but... Uh, I found out later that uh, I was misaligned on one of the pole, so I left it like that. So let's put all the constructor, that's going to be five on each side. And usually when I do that I like uh, putting on my uh, Blade Runners, because I'm not jumping around and uh, I'm just walking around putting down stuff, so it's uh, it's faster. After that I, I uh, go back to my jetpack. Jet because really when you build vertically, the jetpack is your friend. It's so much easier to go between floors with a jetpack instead of just walking on the walkways. What's going on? Oh, it's already there. <laughs> so let's connect everything. I usually, I forgot to do it, but usually before putting a splitter, I set up my, um, my production. Because right now I need to jump in between uh, or above those uh, splitters, so it's easier and faster to do so when the splitters are not there. So I usually do that first, but I got distracted and uh, I forgot. So let's do that. Once that's done, we connect everything. I use uh, just basic Mark 1 conveyor belts for uh, from the splitter to the constructor because the input is only 15 per minute so I'm saving on some resources there. Uh, I could do the same for um, the, those line here. Some don't uh, need the 450 for the for the Mark 3. It's actually 150 coming here but uh, I'm a bit lazy. I don't want to change my uh, setup and I don't like Mark three belts because they require steel beam and I just don't produce steel beams. So we're good here. All this is connected. I'm gonna do the mergers now and see how it fits like really close. Uh, if I put my, my merger there, I don't think it's gonna work with the, the curve of the belt. So when you, uh, you plan your elevator, 
it's quite important to test if your uh, merger is going to sp uh, split the product properly or merge the product properly. If you put it too close, it won't work. So uh, better watch out. I always try to have my uh, my stacks, my conveyor stackable poles uh, outside my uh, merger. It looks better as well, but uh, it's just to ensure that everything works fine. So let's connect everything. I'm also using just normal conveyor belts. I'm going to do the same on the other side. See, I tried, uh, I tried to align my uh, the green arrow with the blue arrow. It's not perfect. doesn't need to be perfect, but... Uh, just don't deviate too much because you won't be able to connect if it's uh, too skewy. And the last step is the power. And power here is where we were was really tight. Because see, there's not a lot of room here, and at the other side, there's none. So we'll you'll see that it's quite tight. So let's put a power pole. I, I use the M Mark II because uh, I need six connection. And here it's quite tight. See, that's the only spot I can fit it. <laughs> that was lucky for me. Here I can put a Mark I, but I just put a Mark II because I don't like switching between the poles and I don't have them into my hotbar. So I just use the Mark II. There you go, I connect three machines, three machines as well here. And see, it's connected between the two, and this one's gonna go back to the main one there. And this last one is gonna connect the remaining four machines and connect to the power line going up and down the walkways, like so. When that's done, I always make sure that everything is producing fine. And it's not because we don't have an input product because of the coal line missing on this uh, construction. So uh, I'm going to assume it's all fine. See, it's all yellow belts. Usually it's the power is on, but they're waiting for uh, either output or input. So uh, everything's done here. I just need to uh, work on the last three floors. I'm going to record it, but I'm going to speed it up. And uh, we're going to be at the end of this. So later.
now it's done and i just noticed i planned for one too many floor <laughs> when i built my structure i went to 19 floor instead of 18 so that's it it's all built and let's have a look at the factory it's coming along quite nicely we have uh, here the rods the plates over there this one is the iron foundries producing a six mark four belt there's two smelter array that produce one mark four belt each I have some wire production that feeds into the cable production and that's my plastic production it's all gonna go on the main bus uh, right now I only have some iron some cable and some wires on the bus I'm gonna put uh, the pipes now and uh, here's the the foundry set up for the for steel that's my uh, old uh, smelter production for uh, ingots iron ingots i used it uh, for one lane coming into my steel smelting so that's it guys thank you for watching uh soon i'm gonna do a video on about uh, tips and tricks on building vertically so uh, if you enjoy it just uh, sub subscribe to the channel and you get the not notification when it's ready so thank you guys have a good day